Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, usually when a new model, a new watch, a new design comes out, I try to be moderate because designers can challenge perception, be forward looking and sometimes it takes time to appreciate them. However, in this case, I will have to make an exception. A couple of days ago, there was a leak from a Fortune magazine, which is very unfortunate, <laughs> um, about a uh, watch called the Cubitus uh, by uh, Patek Philippe, and uh, it looked like a squared out uh, Nautilus, and uh, everybody <laughs> was quite amused, and uh, most people thought this was just a uh, Photoshop job. There was no way a watch could be called uh, something so silly and look that ridiculous. So uh, in this case, I'm going to have to make a bit of an exception to my rule uh, and uh, really call it for what it is, an absolute lack of imagination, an absolute disaster. And it tells you a lot about uh, the direction that the brand has been taking with some really questionable uh, designs in the past collections. And to be honest, I think it's hurting the brand uh, a lot. But let's uh, scroll down and already the first words are marketing uh, verbiage of uh, epic uh, uh, ridicule, uh, unmistakable ele elegance. They really had to uh, search a lot for that. And this is the watch with the hinged side. This is the platinum version. And it is uh, it has all the codes of the Nautilus, but it is squared. So yeah, everybody wants the Nautilus. So let's pretend that we don't want to uh, hang on by uh, by this uh, hang on to this model let's uh, discontinue it but let's make a green version first because that's the trend and then let's make it super ugly with a tiffany color tiffany uh, version that uh, only the elites can get just so we look uh, even more like uh, we're trying to make more cash out of the nautilus and then let's make a squared nautilus so they pretend that it's all new and uh, i feel bad for the watchmakers who uh, make those beautiful movements and then uh, this is what it is um, uh, reduced uh, to. Now, there is a fancy promo video for this uh, new line of uh, watches, uh, but it, it must have been shot in some super high-def uh, format unknown to Apple because it, it keeps on interrupting. It doesn't play well on my phone or, the, um, or on the tablet. Uh, the music is really annoying and uh, deafening. It can, it's really difficult to actually change the, the volume. So I'm going to have to uh, I'll leave it for a second and I will turn it off as I comment on it. Uh, let's uh, play it. See, it's already interrupting. I'll let you hear the voiceover a bit. As I reach up. Okay, you get the idea. Let's stop the uh, the volume. This is about a milestone. The guy looks about uh, 40, really good looking guy. Uh, he's grateful. So there's a lot of modern verbiage marketing type uh, to please modern audiences. I'm, s I'm guessing there's going to be a token actor uh, coming up soon in this uh, promo video. Look at this guy, beautiful teeth, amazing hair, a bit too much product into it. There you go, token actor, of course. So it's about... Uh, milestone i suppose they are celebrating him there on the top of a tower looks like uh, new york his buddies look uh, look very good as well uh, a bit similar to him not as nice uh, he's got the best hair so he's humbled by his good fortune humble that's how you have to feel now uh, about uh, daddy's cash he still has lots to learn good Good, so let's see. Uh, maybe we're going to see uh, Papa and uh, Mama. I'm guessing this guy doesn't come from the gutter. Maybe uh, uh, you uh, can feel the chip on my shoulder. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, there you go. If I stay true to myself, whatever the hell that means, and follow my instincts. Well, if you follow your instincts, maybe you keep on working at the bank. Uh, better have job safety so there you go his dad looks amazing did your dad look uh, look like that if he did you probably already have a patek uh, that's his mom and uh, weirdly his uh, wife looks uh, about the same age as his mom so maybe it's uh, the uh, his aunt and uh, he wanted to double down on the family heritage uh, but uh, yeah let's check it out 
Where's the wife? Where's the wife? I had a sneak peek before, so that's why I already know a part of the uh, the plot. Uh, but yeah, he wants his uh, legacy to be looked at kindly by his family and friends. What the hell does that mean? Anyway, this is the uh, aunt. I mean, the the wife. <coughs> what a what a happy life, happy wife, and um, yeah, he's probably thinking. Uh, yeah, am I gonna stay with her or not? That it that will depend on the uh, quality of the race watch she has chosen for me. And uh, she's like, hey, "There you go, darling. I know you really wanted one of these." And he's like, "Oh my god, an aquanaut! Oh my god, a Nautilus! Let's see the the box. Ah, oh, the famous wooden box. Let's see that. Come on, video." Come on, video, show us the classic. What, what, what is this? <laughs> Darling, what, what, what is this? Is that a Patek Philippe? What is this cheap box? Okay, whatever. Maybe that's the new uh, Aquanote uh, box. Uh, he can't wait to open it. Open it, darling. Oh, come on, come on. Uh, 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 what is this? Is that a, is that a shopping mall watch? <laughs> what is this knockoff square nautilus oh god i really hate you now i'm really gonna dump your ass for a girl half your age oh no now i'm gonna have to pretend i like this watch and wear it the whole evening well at least i can uh, stay true to the patek philippe uh, motto i'm just gonna uh, keep it in a box and uh, pass it on to the next generation who they'll do whatever they want uh, with it i doubt it will uh, raise much money at an auction in uh, 30 years so that's it for the uh, the, the video uh yeah it is very cringy a uh, cringy marketing uh, with a modern verbiage you never actually own a patek philippe and he probably wishes he didn't have to own uh, this one uh, oh my god this is this is really terrible really terrible uh so the, the movie can't be played properly so already a big mistake by the marketing department now let's see what Thierry Stern has to say and to be honest i have uh, two small kids eight and uh, 11, and uh, they are a lot more fluent in English than Thierry, who's the president of a multinational uh, company. Uh, well, no, it's a Swiss company, uh, but but selling to uh, clients all over the world, very well-educated uh, clients. Well, again, not all of them. And uh, this is the way he speaks. Well, since a long time, I really always wanted to have a square watch in a collection. It's not easy, as 85% of the watches around the world <laughs> That's are That's a good round. justification. And um, since I was uh, quite young, I always challenged myself to say, I need to have also a beautiful square watch. It's nice things to say, yeah, challenging yourself. So that's yourself. how it started, actually, simply like that, to say, we have to find something new, something, something new. And it took a long time, to be frank, to find such did a it. beautiful piece, because really did there it. was many different ways that I could start the design. Uh, and maybe he did. Watch. But in maybe my it took mind, ages. it has to be a thin watch. It Obviously, has also to be a, a watch who could came with a new movement. And it has Is also it to be a watch who had really all the DNA of Patek Philippe inside. Well, obviously, Patek Philippe is making it. So this is just nonsense. And really, did it take so much time, Philippe? Wait, let me think about... Oh, wait, wait. What did the very first wristwatch designed by Cartier look like? Let's take a look. Oh, my God. Yes, it was square. It... Oh, my God. They already did it. It was square, it was thin, and it still looks amazing today. You know what else looks amazing? This uh, Glashütte original, uh, 70s, this is amazing. They even have a Tiffany version packed with features that uh, Patek could never put uh, together because there's, all, there's always something missing, I find, in, uh, in their complication uh, watches. And of course, their watches are of very, quite fragile and that you're supposed to, uh, to care for for the next generation. So you can never really enjoy them. A glass shooter original, you can really enjoy them. I mean, we're training generations to be little sissies with their Patek Philippe uh, watches and uh, barely wear them, make sure there's no scratch on it so they can uh, pass it on to the next generation who can auction the watch. That's the whole spirit of Patek Philippe now. Back to the, the website. So let's discover more about this, uh, this watch. So it literally has all the little details like the hinged uh, the hinges on the on the side, the same type of a uh, crown, uh, the same layout of the 5712 uh, for this uh, platinum version, and they put it on a 
young looking uh, type of a uh, strap but it's still the same dial the same pattern the same uh, color this one looks really uh, really ugly so basically after spending all this time thinking about having a square watch which is very prevalent in the watch market uh, already so it's not that difficult what did he do he just told the designer to square out an nautilus and put the exact same stuff in it just when you say you don't want to be the nautilus you make another nautilus uglier and i mean it's not impossible to love this watch but it's just a lack of imagination and then you make the the two-tone which is the uh, yeah not, not not my favorite either and of course, bring back the, the, the green dial. So there's immediately one that everybody wants. Usually they go for a black or white dial first, and then they bring the blue, and then they bring the green. Here they go straight for the, the green. The reference is the 5821. This one is in a steel. I think it's going to be uh, 30 grand. <coughs> so there you go. I don't know if you guys need to uh, d discover more, but uh, frankly, if that's the, the direction that the supposedly market leader takes... In my current state of mind, uh, already being quite indifferent to many releases, it almost makes me want to avoid the brand because, yes, they can make a model you don't like and they, they have in the past, but that's fine as long as there's some qualities to it, it appeals to some uh, people. But this is so unimaginative and so horrible that to me it damages the entire heritage of the brand. I don't want to be part of a brand that does this. Even if they have nicer watches that I love, and you know, at, at the moment I'd love uh, the 5212, uh, for example, uh, very original, very cool. Uh, maybe uh, the, the chronograph with the wall timer, although it looks a bit big. Anyway, I just don't want the association. So it, it really feels like uh, it, it takes years and decades to establish this incredible reputation. And it's just one stroke. Thierry Stern is just ruining it. I, I, I could. I could say okay with the last collections when they did the, those pilot watches, when they ruined the 6000 series with the 6007. I mean, everything is super well made with Patek, no doubt. And I'm sure these watches are well made, but the lack of imagination and relying again on a Nautilus, just squaring it, I find it absolutely uh, ridiculous. But let's take a look at uh, the most palatable uh, one, the 5821. Does it have, so it says it's a brand new movement. Uh, does it have the uh, square movement? We're gonna see that in a second. So the price in Hong Kong dollar, 318,000. That's gonna be uh, 40 grand, uh, isn't it? Yeah, that's nearing the, the 40 grand uh, even more. That's a lot. It's not even, it's a steel model. Uh, does the clasp have adjustment? No, still not. Fold over clasp with a lockable Thing. And I mean, from the side, it looks like a, it's the, you're looking at the Nautilus. And at the back, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, where's the. It's not a squared movement. It's not a movement made for this watch. It's the wrong movement, the same wrong movement you get in the Nautilus. To me, that's the, uh, the final. This is the, f the straw that breaks the camel's back. It's just the, the final insult. And there's uh, this super ugly dial. I don't know is that if it's the frame around the um, the date that I hate the most maybe about it. 5822 with the uh, 240 PS caliber, uh, the same of this, it looks the same as the 5712. And uh, probably calls it new because uh, it, it's got a, a few new features, but it still looks very much the same as the old caliber. This one, the price is bonkers, uh, 681,000 Hong Kong dollar. Oh my God, I think that's 88,000 uh, US. There is no profile. I can look at, at it, at all these pictures. There, There is no profile of this watch that makes it look better. And it doesn't even come with a bracelet and it is a rounded caliber. So, uh, I don't know, guys, this really makes me feel like uh, Thierry Stern is an utter buffoon. Uh, maybe, uh, I know, he's too concerned about selling the, the brand to a, a big group at this point, but um, it really puts me off from the brand. So, let me know what you think, guys. Again, I don't like to judge new watches too harshly, but the lack of imagination uh, on, on this one just just kills me and I think it kills 
uh, the brand. And I'm really wondering if people are going to go to the uh, ADs who, who will pretend, of course, that, not, that it's not available. And uh, I really want to ask you all, if you go to a Patek AD and if at the front it says that uh, display only, don't go in. Just, just wave, just say hello. And if the guy comes out uh, really eager to uh, make you come inside the, the shop, just tell him, oh, I know you don't sell any watches. Uh, I'll come back when uh, this is not for display only. Well, tell me, tell me what you think about it, guys. I'm running out of uh, battery on my iPad and in my own soul, this watch has killed uh, every in bit of interest I had for watches. At the moment, I'm going to have uh, to breathe in and uh, search deep for uh, a reason to uh, still ever buy another watch. Bye-bye, guys.